Hello and welcome, my name is Parkin, this is Parkin Shorts, a series which will allow me to play a variety of games on my channel suggested by you. Every few episodes I'll play a new game and if it gets a brilliant response from you guys, it may be played as a full series on my channel. Today we're going to be playing some Space Pirates and Zombies, also known as Spaz, which is very politically incorrect. However, <laughs> what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting a new game. I have not played this game before. I've heard some good things about it though, and really, I don't know what to expect, so we're just going to get into it. What the heck is this? Okay, here you can decide how large you want the galaxy to be. The larger the galaxy, the less commodities each system will have. Smaller galaxies have more dense, condensed experience and can provide blah blah. Oh, I see, right, okay. Let's just leave this. <laughs> and we're definitely going to, um, let's just generate again. Uh, you are here, around the edge of this... We always on the edge? Whatever, let's just start. And we're definitely going to not skip the tutorial because I have no idea what's going on. Now all I do know about this game is that it is a sort of top-down space exploring... I usually use the term strategy game. And really, to be honest, I'm just going to be learning alongside with you, if, unless you've played this game before, which I'm sure many of you have, but I'm a complete noob. And please excuse me today, because I may be slightly less than with it, because I've literally just stepped foot inside my house after doing an exam for university. Shh, a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighbouring star. Total biscuit? Is that you? I've completely forgot that he did this game. Folding of space time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates, which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. So it's kind of like a shit version of Stargate. Wonderful. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number one two six. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. That sort of doesn't work with the god particle thing, but whatever. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the Warpgate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding warp network looking for res deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where res deposits became richer and richer. Good to know. A growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable. As the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. So basically, there was all law and order, and now it's all gone to shit. And Total Biscuit is sounding really depressed. <laughs> Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary mother load of rares. Oh, we love loads of rares. Right, okay, so that's us, I assume. That spaceship looks very, uh, <laughs> really interesting. Don Gibson. Okay, folks, it's that time again. This should be our seventh engine test this week. I don't want to go to bed with radiation burns again tonight, alright? So let's get these puppies fired up good and proper this time. 
Yes, well you see, we're very lucky the toilets even flush on this brick. I've managed to bootstrap the induction coil to the main core to boost output, and I don't expect it to maintain a vi viable reaction. Nuclear, particle physics and duct tape do not mingle well, yes? Okay, so we're powering our, <laughs> our engines with toilet fuel. Probably that blue sort of toilet liquid that you would see in aircraft. I don't know what that is. It must... I, I don't know. What is that? Carl, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. I know do I, to be quite honest. Just turn the bloody thing on. Wonderful. Oh, good. Well, that went well, didn't it? Good job, Carl. You idiot. Tom, the magnetic stabilizers blow. We have major, major breasts on the deck six through ten. Our escort ships are gone and we're venting atmosphere. We have crew casualties. Oh, crewman can always be replaced. This ship damage, on the other hand, well, I told you that piece of junk wouldn't hold back an overload. Did you honestly expect any different? Look what I have to work with here. The blown stabilizer system will have to be replaced before we can even think of trying this again. God, I'm so sorry. It's a common part. Really? <laughs> Just stop. I'm sure there's another one of those in the junk field somewhere. We still have a working hangar, so let's fire up a fabricator system, blah. Okay, push space to build a space to build a ship. Hang on, I push space. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Dear God. Ship's log. No. Hangers. There we go. Design. Select hanger. Right. <laughs> Bloody hell. And we got like a porta potty looking thing. Oh, I see. So we're actually building the ship, are we? Right. Small mining laser. Sounds good. What is this? Small tractor beam? What is this one, though? Surplus scanner. Oh, yes. Hang on, we want one of those, don't we? Alright, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. Build ship. There we go. Wonderful. What now? <laughs> ship under construction. Right, there we go. Okay, how to fly your ship? Oh, dear God. Hang on, don't do that. Uh, w, forward flush, flush does. Mouse wheel orientation. Right, okay, so we want to go over here. Fetch the part. So this is the mining laser left click. And I assume that's it. I sure hope you're there you go. There will be a quiz after. <laughs> oh dear god, well, I've had enough of quizzes today. What am I doing again? Nearly everything of importance is marked with the radar, allowing you to see it when it's off screen. Radar indicators will be pinned to the edge of the screen, showing you the direction and or orientation of other ships. If you get confused as to what you should be doing, you can see your primary objective in the ship's log, F1. Just about every menu you can see will have a help indicator. Click the ship there, blah. Okay, so help me so much, please. Return, to the, return the part to the mothership. Why are there just like random adverts flying around in space? Good to know that even space has adverts in the future. There we go, right. Well, that should fix the stabiliser, but the over overload compromised the structural integrity of the ship more than I initially thought. We can't jump on the with a breach like this. I've written up an extensive list of repairs that will have to be satisfied before I can conduct another test. Meanwhile, I'll be in my quarters. Let me know when you're done cleaning up your failure. Oh, you've got to be kidding! I really do not hate- I do hate that man! We're going to need to replace more than just one ship if we expect to caught that hole any time soon! That's unfortunately easier than said than done. The hull damage res, res supply. We've lost damn liquor. <laughs> we lost rat- we've lost the damn liquor. The damn liquor. I need to get drunk to restock before we can build re-, re uh, <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, ship's log. No, we do not want this. We want to travel here. I am so sorry. This is probably an awful video. <laughs> Why am I being incredibly... Oh, whatever. I contacted the mining base. They've all drunk an industrial paint stripper, so it wasn't too hard to convince them to let us harvest some res. Well, that's not nice. They're probably going to die. God damn it, Elisa Young. Are you related to Colonel Young from Stargate Universe, for any chance? God. We'll have to be very careful around here. The, the mining base is automated and we won't think twice about slicing us in half with that mining beam. Let's siphon what we need and move on. Your prospect prospecting request has been granted. Please refrain from tampering with the automated mining systems. If you happen to be exposed to the vacuum displace, splace, please proceed to the nearest Eve wash station and I wash station. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm butchering this like normal. 
This should be interesting. That asteroid they're drilling into is even more dense than you, Elisa. Elsa. There's no way we can crack it. One station class core mining beam can, can't near uh, the... Yeah, probably. Okay, so it's too slow to scout for res on its own, so it deploys short-range beacon that can transfer ships and res back and forth. Keep an eye on how much cargo space your ships have. The more full the cargo bay, the slower the ship will go. Please be aware that smaller ships cannot carry large deposits of res. Blah, blah. So we want to go over here. So we need to go back there in order to drop off our res. Bring res to the beacon. You can usually find a good supply of res near any mining base. Collect what you can to bring it back to the beacon. Oh god, I would assume it'd be bad. Oh no, you can fly over these. Oh god, yeah, we probably don't want to go in that though. So we're basically waiting for this mining base to chop bits of this res off. And then we're just going to grab it up. Hang on, is this our mining laser? Mining laser? Not enough cargo space. Oh, I see, right. Okay, so we now need to drop that off. God damn it, that didn't take long, did it? So is this basically... I, I have to say, I do like the graphical style of this. There we go. So now we can go back and grab some more, which is wonderful. So these people... Basically, the storyline is what? We want res. And these people have drunk paint stripper, and they're going to die. But we're laughing at that because it is apparently really funny. And we're just stealing their resources and their hard-earned cash. They probably go home that night and be like, I'm really sorry. I don't know why they're a woman or the queen. I'm really sorry, but wifey, I have not brought home enough res, so our child is going to die of the plague, space plague, that definitely exists. I don't even know what's going on anymore. We're going to get this, though. Bring res to the beacon. Can we mine this ourselves? Of course we can't. So let's go and grab all these other bits that flung off the side. We're almost there by the looks of things, which is absolutely fine with me. Okay. So let's go back. How many more do we need? Oh, just one more. Oh, why did I collect that many? Whatever. There we go. Now we have enough res to build an extra ship we're going to need. Plus I am officially kick-ass and salvage another hangar. Should be able to support two ships now. That being the good news, here is the bad news. The explosion has wiped out all of our construction database and nobody backs up their hard drive. Luckily I was able to recover the data for a single fighter ship called the Dart. A Wraith Dart? I recommend we build a couple. Our current ships can't, cut, we can't even cut butter, let alone stand up against the UTA ships. Well, we finally finally some progress. Let's see what blah. Okay, wonderful. Dart's now available. So we can now go into the hangar screen. That's fine with me. Right, new ships available. Empty hangar. Let's build one of these. And this is probably what we want. Yeah, build ship. There we go. Like so. Oh, hello, there you are. Two. Let's go with this guy, shall we? So the other one, I assume, is just going to follow us around. Oh, epic. Look at this. Oh, God, we're flying quite quickly, actually. There we go. How the heck am I flying this? Oh, I see, and then you need one in order to pick this up. I get it. Yes! I get the game, I know how it works. There we go. And then we pick it up with this one. Not enough cargo space, because we're already full, apparently. Build two attack ships, start. Okay, F3. So we need another one, do we, apparently? So we're getting rid of this? Alright, well, I assume so. Refit. There we go. Build two dart ships. Yeah, it must be. I have no I other idea what we're supposed to do. Right. There we go. Well, there we go. Our fleet is significantly less pathetic now. We've got what we need. Let's get out of the hell of there. there. Mac! So, you are what bash pick my stones and run off, do you? Well, you go right ahead there, Missy, but don't be here and be out fast. You'll help kick those UTA boys out and Jimmy and stuff. 
I suppose we can trust these people, providing you have any money in your pockets. I'm not really sure what what we have any choice. Repairing the clockwork without their help is going to be difficult. Okay, we're free to switch between any ships using the number key. Right, I've already discovered that, actually, so that's good. So, dock with the mining base. Let's do that. That sounds like a good idea. So can we... We have got a capacity, but it's only of two. Okay, then. Okay, welcome. Feel free to breeze, browse our stro strocks. We're always looking for able-bodied workers. Take a look at some of the existing employment opportunities we offer. Okay, so we've got one of... Well... Pfft. It's a good idea to pick up primary missions. Get you closer to reaching the galactic core. Okay, we'll take the primary mission. UTA have been confiscating the cargo from some of our mining ships in an attempt to use it to establish a lookout post in the area. This is not good for business. We need to destroy their supplies and force them to restock somewhere else. It should not be heavily guarded. Sounds good. Let's leave this station. Right, well, it seems like a good place to end it. God knows what the fuck is going on here. But if you enjoyed it and want to see more, then please feel free to leave your support in, this, in the comment section below and the likes. I'm going to go and have some sleep now because I've just done a really difficult exam. Goodbye, awkward, awkward goodbye, awkward.